So uh, at the beginning of this uh, conference, Rosaline has pointed out that uh, practically no one outside our circle knows about the Sahara, the Sahel, and the situation of its fauna. So that is something uh, we want to change with an exhibition, which I already um, presented in its initial stages uh, two years ago. Now, now it's uh, in action. It is, uh, has already been shown. The scope of this exhibition is um, to raise awareness and to draw attention on wildlife and the conservation needs in the Sahara and the Sahel. Outline of this exhibition, it has four parts. First, a general information about deserts, about the climate, vegetation, survival strategies of plants and animals, fauna, uh, and specific adaptation to desert conditions. Part two, uh, nature conservation is more important for this conference, so I will uh, focus on this in this presentation um, and uh, present a few specific cases of endangered mammals and birds, but we also talk about reptiles and uh, insects and other species. In part three, um, the human life in the desert is uh, explained, which is of course, uh, as we heard in uh, this uh, afternoon, is a very important thing if you want uh, to protect um, fauna effectively, you have to also look at the humans. The dromedary, the Bedouin life, oasis, desert, pharmacology, medical plants are part of this exhibition, and finally, the desertification. So uh, I just focus on part two, on the nature conservation issues. And most of these animals you are going to hear about a lot during this conference, so I, I can be short. We talk about the Dharma gazelle, and the main message here is that more of 90% of the remaining individuals now are found in captivity and no longer in nature. We talk about other gazelles, which uh, are uh, now under threat. They were less, they, they were very uh, abundant uh, a few decades ago, but for example, in Libya, where these pictures are taken from, they are killed in, in large numbers. And uh, we come to case three. This is oryx antelopes, which um, we focus not only on the, uh, on the um, North African oryx, but also on the Arabian oryx which both are extinct in the wild and reintroduction in Chad and Jordan is underway. The Adax, of course, uh, which has a few last surviving animals in Chad, successful breeding in Morocco and other countries. The Sahelian giraffe, which uh, is a success story in Niger a growing population now. And another success story are the Mali elephants, which you heard about today by Susan. Poaching is now prevented by cooperating with the local community, which is an, another important message. Case seven, the cheetah, there are two different issues. One is uh, the last population living in the Sahara in Algeria, um, which is nearly extinct in other areas. And uh, more important at the moment is um, the use of these animals as pets in Saudi Arabia and other Arabian countries. They are exported in, in great numbers from Somalia and other countries like Sudan and uh, there is a risk of extinction of these animals just by animal lovers and the fashion to, to have these animals as pets. The leopard. Here we focus on Arabian, on the Arabian leopard on, in Oman and Yemen, where it's probably mainly uh, pr present only in Oman because in the unsecure war situation in Yemen, it's been hunted a lot and uh, there will be not many survive. Few bird examples, the ostrich, of course, 
which is reintroduced here um, in, in Niger, for example, and in, in North African countries. Here is an old photo of mine taken um, exactly 30 years ago in Niger, where I found a wild ostrich in, uh, still there in the Ayer Mountains. But people like this guy, he's not from my company. <laughs> this guy, a, a tourist, the motorcycle, chased this animal just for fun. And another bird of concern is the bald ibis, which is still present in Morocco, but extinct, for example, in Syria, where it died out recently during the um, turmoils with the IS. Okay, so that's a short um, introduction into the themes we, we present. And here's a little overview on the exhibition as it was presented, we see taxidermic uh, pre um, uh, preserved animals, like giraffe, like uh, antelopes, hyena, um, and different smaller mammals, like the desert fox, and finally also birds like ostrich. We also had migrating, migratory birds and others in this exhibition. And of course, the Mali elephants, which is a, a very important part of the exhibition. We also tried to, to, um, uh, to get some donations from the audience of this exhibition for the project for the White Foundation. And uh, a little uh, aspect of the part of, on the humans in the, in the Sahara we see here with the original Nomad tent, which I acquired from Jordan, which is also part of the exhibition. Generally, you see here a little um, summary of what is in this exhibition. We have 40 panels, we have video screens, we have interactive media stations. We have a lot of uh, interesting things for children. We have taxidermically prepared animals because we are a museum. We have, uh, models. For example, the gate of Palmyra in Syria is as a life-sized model in the exhibition, three meter high. We have an artificial dune. We have the original Bedouin tent, which you just saw. We have a model of a well. And we made a 100-page book in German language, I'm afraid. The whole exhibition is in German, and it was shown in Germany in our city, Braunschweig, in 2019 till the COVID started in 2020 and is currently it's again seen in another German city in Bielefeld. The language is just German, but translations are possible if the exhibition is wanted by another uh, country, we can make a translation, it is uh, still possible. So I, I like to thank a lot of people which contributed with, uh, different, um, with di different different uh, help in this to, to provide this exhibition. This is just a short list. There are much, much more, many more people who helped me and very, very uh, grateful I am to all these people. And uh, I'm grateful for you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>